In 1969, the year Hillary Rodham Clinton graduated from Wellesley College, but 53% said they would support a well-qualified female presidential candidate. Today, a vast majority of Americans tell pollsters they are willing to vote for a qualified African-American for president. This was not always the case. In 1958, 51 years ago, when Gallup first asked a version of his question, a majority, 53%, said they would not vote for a black candidate for president, period. In 1984, 25 years ago, 16% told Gallup they would not do so. However, in 2008, an, over, an, overwhelming, two th an overwhelming 92% said they would vote for a qualified black candidate for president. And a review of exit polls from the 2008 primary elections strongly suggests that a very small percentage of voters, a very small percentage of voters, made judgments about candidates based solely or even mostly on race. In 2008, Gallup began a daily tracking survey, interviewing a thousand adults nationwide every day. The compilation of this information on the 2008 presidential election enabled Gallup to probe the political thinking of subgroups such as Hispanics and Jews and to examine regional voting patterns in depth. In 1936, Gallup asked approximately 50 questions about that year's presidential election. By the 1960 presidential election, the number had jumped to about 150 questions. In the 2008 presidential election cycle, using the latest electronic technology, Gallup asked more questions than, than were asked in all the 1936-2004 presidential elections combined. These surveys stand as a testament to George Gallup's vision and commitment of learning and reporting the will of the people, the pulse of democracy. Of the 56 presidential elections in American history, the 2008 contest must rank among the most exciting, the most compelling, and the most important. When the campaign began in late 2006, no one could have predicted the remarkable, path-breaking events and turnabouts that followed, concluding with the election of Barack Obama. The campaign marked many firsts, a biracial man, Obama, and a white woman, Hillary Clinton, competed against each other for the Democratic nomination. Also, Sarah Palin was the first woman to run for vice president on the Republican Party ticket. Obama, 47 years old, became the first African American to win the nomination of a major political party. In contrast, his Republican opponent, John McCain, at age 72, was the oldest person ever to run for president on a major party ticket. This 25-year age difference was the widest in American history between two presidential candidates. The 2008 election was also the first in which two sitting United States senators ran against each other, and the first in which neither presidential candidate was born in the continental United States. The 2008 election marked the first time since 1952 that neither an incumbent president nor former vice president was on the ticket. In both the Democratic and Republican primaries, voters had a wide choice over whom to select to represent their party and ultimately to lead the nation. Voter turnout broke records in both the primaries and the general election. And throughout the entire process, the Gallup poll tracked the views, attitudes, and preferences of Americans with respect to dozens of issues relating to the presidential campaign. The 700-page volume that we have compiled, and which will be published next month, 
is an extraordinary compilation of public opinion polls and political analysis of the 2008 presidential campaign. Gallup's election analysis shows that Democrats were more energized than Republicans. In Gallup's final poll, 73% of Democrats and independents leading, leaning Democratic said that they were enthusiastic about voting, compared with but 59% of Republicans and independents leaning Republican. Obama's victory is owed in part to an extraordinarily high support from blacks. Not only did nearly all blacks, 99% who participated in the election vote for Obama, but blacks came out in record numbers, constituting 13% of Gallup's final likely voter pool, up from 8% in the 2004 presidential election. Obama won greater support than his Democratic predecessors from highly educated voters. He attracted significant new support from middle-aged voters. In addition, far few voters considered themselves Republican in this election than did so in 2004. The resulting more pro-democratic political climate in the country may also be a reason why Obama won. Obama's victory over McCain concluded a, a race that was highly competitive throughout the year. The two were essentially tied during the primary season, that is from March through, uh, from March through May 2008. Obama moved slightly ahead of McCain once he clinched the Democratic nomination in early June. McCain then succeeded in overtaking Obama after the Republican National Convention in September. McCain held this lead for 10 days from, from September 7th through September 16th. But the onset of the Wall Street crisis in mid-September helped shift voters back into Obama's column. And this Wall Street crisis appears to have been the turning point in the campaign. The presidential debates during the fall were McCain's best opportunity to reverse Obama's growing momentum. But McCain was unable to do so. Gallup polls found that Americans rated Obama the winner of all three debates. This may have helped Obama to solidify his gains. October 2008 proved to be Obama's best month of the campaign. In Gallup daily tracking polls for October, Obama averaged a nine-point lead among registered voters over McCain. The last surprise in the surprising presidential election contest was that there was no surprise on election day. Obama had an easy win. As late as mid-September, analysts and the public and the American public itself were throwing up their hands, saying, we can't figure out this election. There are too many intangibles. Well, things changed in late September, throughout October, and right up to election day. The Wall Street meltdown mattered, and the presidential debates had an enormous impact on the perception of the candidates. Over the course of the three debates, the public became more comfortable with Obama. An increasing number of voters came to see him as qualified to be president. Furthermore, after the third debate, a growing number of voters said that McCain was just too old to be president. Views of Sarah Palin also contributed to questions about McCain's judgment. As the, public got, as the public got to know more about the Alaska governor, views about her shifted significantly. By the end of October, Palin's image just flopped. Most important, Gallup analyses going back decades have shown that vice presidential candidates have little or no impact upon voting pattern. 